Hello, I'm Lori LaRusso. I'm in my studio in Louisville, Kentucky, and I'm going to answer some questions about my work for Gallery Urbane. Growing up in the Midwest in the 1980s and 90s, I developed a set of ideas and desires around food based on what I was allowed to eat at home and just as influential what I was not eating at friends' houses or in the school cafeteria and seeing commercials for food and restaurants on television and seeing packaging for food in the grocery stores complicated my understanding of what was and wasn't desirable. And I became interested in how various attitudes around food are both contradictory and constantly in flux. In my practice, I use food-related imagery to reflect on the symbolic role food can play. I investigate the ways in which social norms governing or judgment of the way the thing is produced or grown, packaged, prepared, labeled, photographed, presented, posted, consumed, and discarded are arbitrary, but also have consequences in how we see these things as good or bad, delightful or disgusting, clean or dirty, healthy or unhealthy. In dealing with these issues, my work explores how we view ourselves and others. My process involves a lot of masking. So I will visually reduce an image to shapes based on the values, which are the relative lightness and darknesses, and then cover the surface of the painting with masking tape. I use an X-Acto knife to cut out and expose the areas I wanna paint, mix the paint and apply multiple coats to that area. Once the paint is dry, I pull the tape off and I repeat the process with a different shape and color and do this over and over and over again until the whole painting is complete. The square paintings are on cradled wooden panels, and the others are on a polymetal substrate like this one that I cut out with a jigsaw in my studio. When I began making these paintings, I was interested in the shifting ways humans communicate care for one another through online interactions. Since the start of the pandemic, this way of communicating care has become more commonplace due to social distancing and travel restrictions. Over the past year or so, the series has evolved as 21st century still life paintings. They pose questions around the ownership and authorship of image and text in the digital sphere, and they blur the lines between heartfelt, genuine expression and advertising, which is ubiquitous today. This series began as an extension of the ritual of preparing food, eating food, and cleaning up after the food. I would photograph the dirty dishes in my sink and go to the studio and make paintings of them. Conceptually, I'm thinking about my relationship to the common inanimate objects in my environment, particularly those objects or tools that use to serve a utilitarian purpose rather than an aesthetic one. Also, the process of making my work reflects elements of domestic labor related to food and giving care. Like in many domestic tasks, my work is precise, deliberate, time-consuming, and labor-intensive. Like with caregiving, the labor is skilled, thoughtful, not performed, and usually invisible with others only seeing the results. The subject matter of this painting doesn't reference food or eating, but it does suggest a domestic setting, much like the kitchen sink still life paintings suggest a kitchen. The title of the painting, Curfew, refers to a restriction put in place to exert control, restrict movement, and protect humans from an environment such as a nightly curfew for teenage girls, which was my first understanding of a curfew. While furniture naturally has some corporeal associations like legs, arms, and feet, the particular couch represented is coated as feminine with a curvy shape, decorative carved wood, and tufted pink upholstery. The conflict here is that the couch itself has been scandalized, visually broken, and presumably removed from the safety of the home. The decorative sleeping sunshine pillow hints at the dangers, perceived or actual, of being out past one's bedtime. 